what's up everybody this is David Jagno aka the Jaggernaut and I'm back again with another new video this time all about DC Universe Online or DCUO. Daybreak Games' superhero themed MMORPG just released on Nintendo Switch this week and I've been playing it since last weekend. After playing it off and on for a week I wanted to provide my early impressions of how it plays on Switch, how it shapes up to the MMO competition, and whether it is worth your time in a crowded market. Let's jump in. First we'll talk about the game as a whole, and then I'll focus on the Switch port specifically. First things first, DC Universe Online is an old game. It first launched all the way back in 2011 as a pay-to-play subscription-based MMO for PS3 and PC. It later came to PS4 in 2013 and Xbox One in 2016. Following a rocky launch, it has flourished since then in recent years with a steady stream of new content and new features. PS3 support was shut down in early 2018 and PS4 and PC players share the same server, but Xbox and Switch players are entirely separate. Since DCUO is a free-to-play game, that means you don't need to pay a dime to download and play it at all whatsoever on any platform. There are tons of ways the game tries to get money out of you though and if you enjoy it at all, I would highly recommend exploring some of those avenues to compensate the developers, but it's not required to experience a big chunk of the content. Since this is a comic book based MMO, updates are doled out a bit differently than you might be used to in other MMOs. In games like Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XIV, and other MMOs, when a new expansion releases that brings a ton of new content, maybe some new classes, new landmasses to explore, etc. DCUO is different in that its content is actually formatted as shorter episodes and it gets them far more consistently and frequently over the whole year. So instead of maybe having a half dozen expansions since it came out eight years ago, what you might expect, it's actually had over 30 episodes. The episodes are a bit like comic storylines or issues that focus on specific characters, regions, and villains. There are episodes about the Titans, right now Justice League Dark is the focus, there's a big Atlantis one that came out not that long ago, Batman Black is coming soon with the Metal update, and there's so much more. If you're a free player, then you get access to the base game and its core storyline. There are a handful of powers to pick from, a bunch of costume designs, and plenty of ways to make your hero your own. Then each time a new episode releases, that new episode is a free episode for all players to play until the next episode comes out. So this means if you start now and want to play past episodic content that came out before, like Atlantis, you would need to either buy those episodes individually, which usually costs between 4 and $10, or you need to pay the optional subscription fee, which starts at $15 a month. If you pay the fee, you get access to all episodes, more character slots, all the powers, and a bunch of other perks. The generous thing about the system is that if you know you want to play DCUO a lot one month, then you can pay the $15 and binge a bunch of the episodes over that time, then let your membership run out without renewing it and you'll keep all the gear that you earned. Additionally, subscribing for one month permanently unlocks four more character slots on top of the two free ones, even after your membership's over. So that also includes characters that have paid powers as well. So you can make four new characters with all with paid powers while your membership is active and then keep playing them once you're a free player again. So subscribing for just one month, a mere $15 gets you quite a bit of access and you can renew to check out more old episodes anytime you want. Or if you stay subbed, you get lots of ongoing perks that let you swap builds easier, get recurring currency to purchase upgrades and cosmetics and more. But it is not mandatory to really play in the majority of the game. You can stay free. However, there are some annoyances that you'll find as a strictly free player though, like loot drops that are much easier and faster to open if you pay to do so, as well as some feats that require spending money to complete. When you finish enough feats, sort of like achievements, you get skill points, which makes the system a bit frustrating because those are really valuable, especially at the end of the game. A DCUO has a surprisingly deep combat and customization system that's mostly open to all free players. My main hero is named Jaggerzone. He has ice powers and flies around with a staff. Uh, each weapon has its own combos you unlock with skill points and it really adds a lot of depth and nuance to the fighting. This isn't a tab targeting MMO and it's not a game where you just sit there and click through your ability rotation over and over. Combos require actual timing and mixing your light and heavy attacks in rhythm. Using a staff feels great and the fighting is very fluid. I can throw in ice powers to do some AoE damage, reflect attacks, boost damage from my allies, and act as a tank while flowing through my combos with the staff, all in real time. 
Instead of picking traditional classes, you create your own in a way by choosing a weapon and then picking a power set separately. From the start, you also get to choose either flight, super speed, or acrobatics as your movement style, which has a big effect on moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and exploring the world. You get a lot of freedom to design your character for free, including tons of colors, but a large chunk of the powers are behind the paywall, which might be off-putting to some. In terms of content, DCUO is a very PvE-focused game. PvP does exist in the form of team battles, lair battles, and a Legends mode that lets you play as and fight against iconic DC characters but the core of the game is centered around PvE stories and group content. There's an on-duty queue, for example, full of instances for 1, 2, 4, and even up to 8 players, as well as episodic content, like I mentioned before, that has team missions, new overworlds to explore, full of enemies to fight, and as far as I've seen, most of those on-duty events seem to be included for free players too. As of the time of recording this, my main character is only around level 15 at the time of making the video. The base level cap is 30, then it switches to being about your combat power and your gear, which can get much higher than that. Uh, my journal is overflowing with things to do though as a hero. My villains around level 10 in the same situation. Mission variety hasn't been that great so far, it's to be honest, but the story beats are good. For example, I recently fought a possessed team of titans as Raven's father was trying to take over with his demonic powers, so beating back Cyborg, Starfire, and others was really cool. And the missions themselves so far have all just been kill X enemies, walk over a whole day for a few seconds, and go fight this boss, etc. That's par for the course in most MMOs but the combat has kept me entertained and this one has some of the best voice acting in the entire genre. Really cool comic book style illustrated cutscenes as well that are actually worth watching. Many of the key characters are voiced by their animated show counterparts so you'll probably recognize a lot of the voices too. I long ago sold my soul for occult knowledge. Now demons themselves dance at my command. One bit of knowledge eludes me. The flame of life. That electric bolt that creates something from nothing. With regard to the Switch port specifically, I'm extremely impressed. Performance wise, I've not had any issues in either docked or handheld mode. I actually prefer playing in handheld because docked it seems a little more blurry because of the lower pixel density on a large screen by comparison. It runs great either way, but having it on a handheld screen is super impressive. I still can't believe an MMO of this size fits on a console like the Switch. In fact, I played it on the train recently using my Pixel 2 smartphone as a mobile hotspot with unlimited data and it just it worked flawlessly even when the train went underground from oakland to san francisco in california never lost connection no lag worked great honestly it's super impressive that it plays so great on the switch i know it's an eight-year-old game but it's still a huge mmo that was designed on pc initially i wasn't a big player of this game prior to this version but having a portably like this means i can easily hop in and out with zero hassle i can play in bed i can play laying on the couch i can play on the train i can play in the car I can see myself investing quite a bit of time just by nickel and diming and chipping away at the content slowly over time. Overall, DC Universe Online is a great MMO with tons of content that respects your time and it's definitely the perfect MMO for the Switch. If you want to spend cash on it to get more content and more options, you can and there are over 30 pieces of DLC episodes full of interesting stories to explore if you're still hungry after the base game. While this video was about the Switch version, DCUO's content and gameplay are essentially the same on all platforms. The bottom line is that this is a free AAA MMO on Switch and it's frankly the only MMO or game of its type at all on the Switch, period. Hopefully it'll serve as a bat signal to other devs to bring their online virtual world to Nintendo's latest platform. If you enjoyed this video, please leave me a like and comment down below and don't forget to press subscribe and click on that bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. As of now, I post new videos every Friday. For more on DCUO, you can read my interview with the creative director at Daybreak Games over on Forbes.com. Also read my impressions on Gameskinny.com. I'll put links in the description down below. Let me know what you want me to talk about next and have a great day.